Hello friends! Need some pointers on building user interfaces in Godot? Follow along with these videos as we build a title screen. This is a free preview of a course on how to use control nodes in Godot. The most basic thing we need for a title screen for our game would be the title. Let's start by adding a new node to the scene tree. By clicking the plus button, right clicking on the root node and selecting add child, or using the shortcut Control A or Command A. To complete the challenge of using only user interface nodes, we'll only use the nodes that are sorted under Control. This Control is also the same type as the root node of our scene. We can see in the description that Control is the base class for all graphical user interface controls. These nodes will adapt their positions and sizes based on their parent control nodes. The control most often used to display text is named Label, indicated with a tag icon. We can also see the inheritance of the Label class, as each node type is indented below the type it inherits from. Any node or class that inherits from another will have all of the same inherited properties, plus its own extra properties. So the label node is a node, but it is also a canvas item, a control node, and a label. Each of those come with their own properties and behaviors. We can see that the label node is indented below the root node, as it is a child of it. The root node is the label's parent, so the label will adjust its position and size based on the parent node. We'll see what that means soon. Let's rename the label node to title and have a look at its properties in the inspector. The first property is the text that the label will display. So we can enter the game's title here. There are also several options for controlling the text alignment, wrapping, justification, paragraph separation, clipping, ellipses, and tab stops. None of these are really applicable for our title, except maybe uppercase if you would prefer to change all lowercase letters into uppercase letters. The properties under Displayed Text are only applicable for situations where there is too much text to display all of it at once. And BD options are available for languages that are displayed right to left instead of left to right. None of this is important for our game's title. Let's press play and see our title displayed. Since no scene has been selected for the main scene of this project, we are prompted to set it. Press Select Current to set this scene as the game's main scene, and we can see our game run, displaying the title in the top left corner of the window. Press the Stop button to end the simulation. This works, but it isn't very good. We probably want to move the title and increase its size. Looking further at the properties of the label node, these are all of the properties of the label node itself, but there are more sections of properties if we scroll down. The next section holds all of the properties that the label node inherits from Control. If we expand the Layout section, then the Transform section, we can see the size and position properties of the label node. If you can't see this rectangle in your 2D view, adjust it until you can using the mouse wheel to pan and zoom. This blue rectangle is the display area of the game as it will be rendered when we run the game. Notice how the red x-axis overlaps with the top side of the blue rectangle, making it appear magenta. The green y-axis overlaps the left side, making it cyan. And the origin point of the scene is in the top left corner. If we click and drag the title away from the top left corner, its position x and y values in the inspector are updated to reflect its new position. Notice how moving the label down increases the y position, and moving it up decreases it. Let's put the title somewhere around the center of the screen. Then press the play button to see the change. The title is now displayed in the center of the screen. But what happens if we resize the window? The position of the title is determined by its distance from the top left corner of the window. So if we make it bigger or smaller, the title is no longer in the center of the window. Press the reset button to return the label back to the origin, position 00. zero. You probably noticed the green X at the origin when selecting the label node. 
These are four anchors, all pointing to the same position. Let's change the layout mode of the label node from position to anchors. This adds another property named anchor presets, which we can change. If we change the anchor presets to full rect, this is the same as the root node, with an anchor in every corner. If we select the root node, the anchors are all pointing to different corners of the screen. Reselect the label node. The rest of the options will anchor the label to different locations on the screen, in corners, centered, or stretched on one axis along the screen. Let's anchor the title to the center of the screen. Now if we hit play, then resize the window, the title remains centered even if the size of the screen changes. We can also customize how these anchors affect the node by changing anchor presets to custom. This allows us to change the anchor points, defining them as percentages of the screen's width or height. Since anchors are displayed pointing at the corners, each of these anchor point settings will affect two anchors. I'm fine with keeping the title centered horizontally, but I would prefer if it were moved up slightly to about one third of the screen. So adjusting the top anchor point to one third, the top left and top right anchors move up. I'll also set the bottom anchor point to one third so all the anchors point to the same position. Anchor offsets can be used to offset the node's position from the anchor point by set amount. This can lead to the node size being larger than the text, and so the label's alignment property will affect where it is drawn. I'm fine with having the label centered on the anchor point, so I'll reset all of my anchor offsets to zero. The grow direction will affect how the node is repositioned relative to the anchor point based on its size. If told to grow to the left or right, top or bottom, we can see how the node resizes and repositions to accommodate the text. A game title will often have a unique font and font size from anything else in the project. In cases like these, we can ignore the theme we created in the first lesson and instead expand the Theme Overrides section of the control properties. Before we can change the font, we need to import a font into the project. I downloaded this font from Google Fonts. We can import files into the project by dragging them into the Godot Editor window. We can now set this as the font for the title. We can also change the font size. I'll set mine to 49. Styles aren't often used for labels, but to demonstrate, we can add a style box flat to add a background color to the font. Clicking on the style box allows us to change the color, among many other options. Like I said before, this isn't really something that's often used for labels, and we'll go over style boxes in more detail soon. I will remove the style box from my title label by clicking on the reset button. I'll instead add theme overrides for the font color, shadow color, and outline color, making the font white and the shadow transparent. Then add constants for the shadow offsets, outline size, and shadow outline size. Since the title is only one line, line spacing would have no effect. As mentioned earlier, parent control nodes affect the size and position of their children. As we saw before, the title screen node is anchored to the full rectangle of the display area. But if we resize it, its children will recalculate their sizes and positions to fit the size and position of their parents. In this case, the title remains centered horizontally and one-third from the top of the title screen's area. We can reset this back to the way it was by resetting the anchors of the title screen. We now have our game's title displayed on our title screen. In the next lesson, we'll add a background. If you want to enroll in this or any of my courses, they're all available on my Patreon. You can also find them on Udemy and Skillshare. 
I have a Discord server for my followers and students to help each other out. All are linked below. I'll see you in the next video.